Magandang araw sa inyo mga Pinoy Scientists! This is Kyla Margaida from a group of UP Diliman student researchers. Ngayong araw na ito, tatalakayin natin ang isang hot and explosive topic. Kasama syempre ang ating guest speaker. And our topic, Mount Pinatubo Eruption and its Effects on Global Climate Change. Narito si Trina Kugtas upang magbigay ng pahapyaw sa ating topic. Trina? Yes, Kyla. Mount Pinatubo is a stratovolcano, that is to say, a volcano that is conical in shape, that has been built up by layers upon layers of hardened lava, pumice, and volcanic ash. It is located in the Luzon Arc, sa border ng Tarlac, Zambales, at Pampanga. Noon, ang Pinatubo ay nabalutan ng makapal na gubat na panirahan ng maraming mga katutubo. Bago ang makasisa ang pagsabog dito noong 1991, hindi alam ng karamihan ang past volcanic records ng Pinatubo. Nakarakag ng 1991 eruption sapagkat ito ay pangalawa sa pagputok ng Nova Rupta sa Alaska na siyang tinanghal na largest volcanic eruption in the 20th century. Ang pagsabog ng Pinatubo ay tumagal mula June 12 to 15, 1991. Sa gilid ng vulkan, umabot sa 660 feet ang kapal ng volcanic deposits. In addition, it also released tons of poisonous gases in the atmosphere. Sa kabutihang palad, marami ang nakaligtas dahil sa panawagan ng evacuation ng Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology of Fivox at ng gobyerno. Umabot sa walong daan at apat na putpito ang namatay. In the aftermath, a total area of 150 square kilometers about at 125 million pesos of reforestation projects were destroyed. Moreover, the cost of the eruption to agriculture amounted to 1.5 billion pesos. A total of 364 communities and 2.1 million people were affected. The total losses in 1991 and 1992 alone were estimated at 1.6 and 1.2 billion pesos respectively. Including damage to public infrastructure, it is estimated at 3.8 billion pesos. Matapos ang pagsabog, minenotor pa rin ang FIVOX ang volcanic activity ng Pinatubo. This is Trina Kuntas. Back to you, Kayla. Thank you, Trina. So for a deeper understanding on the topic, let us welcome our guest speaker. Our guest speaker for today graduated in UP with the degree of Bachelor of Science in Geology in 1984. He took up his master's degree in Geological Science in the University of Illinois. He then took up his doctorate degree in Earth Sciences in Scripps Institution for Oceanography at the University of California in 2002. He was part of the research and monitoring team of the Pinatubo eruption in 1991. Since 1984, he worked for the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology. And from 2003 up to present, he has been the director of the said institution. As FIVOX director, he supervises and coordinates all activities of the institute to monitor and warn, assess hazards and risks, conduct research and development, and formulate awareness and preparedness plans to events related to volcanic activities, earthquakes, and tsunami. He is none other than Dr. Renato Yusolidum Jr. So, Dr. Solidum, how do volcanic activities alter climate, specifically the regional or global temperature? Before you understand the effect of uh, volcanoes in the Uh, climate system, you have to understand the different components of a climate. Essentially, uh, the temperature of the Earth's surface is dependent on uh, the balance between the solar radiation or the heat coming from the sun and how much is reflected back into the atmosphere. So if uh, the amount reflected back changes, then there will be changes in the temperature above the ground, right? Yes. So essentially, from space, you have the solar radiation or the heat from the sun, and this can be reflected back uh, in many ways. And uh, the uh, heat that is being reflected back on Earth can be affected by the chemical composition just above the surface. Essentially, the chemistry of the atmosphere can change with time, Like currently, there's a discussion on greenhouse gases, like carbon dioxide, water, methane. But if we talk about water and carbon dioxide, and just maybe focus on carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere can change. 
It can change because of the uptake of the biomass. The trees and the vegetation would take out carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Or the carbon dioxide can be released back, like burning of coal. So natural, you know. And the volcanoes can explode. However, some volcanoes would explode violently, like what happened in Pinatubo eruption of 1991. But many volcanoes do not explode violently. Okay, so Pinatubo produced the largest aerosol cloud since Krakatoa erupted in Indonesia in 1883. And the amount would be around 25 to 30 megatons. Since it was a very explosive eruption, like more than 25 kilometers, it reached the stratosphere. Therefore, there was a cloud of sulfuric acid aerosol produced by the eruption of Pinatubo. And essentially, it went around the globe for almost a year after the eruption. It will only happen if the explosion is, is very strong. And so the aftermath would be uh, because of the aerosol floating there and uh, reflecting back the energy from the sun at the stratosphere level, then the troposphere, which is where we are, became cooler. So it decreased the global mean temperature by one degree, slightly less than one degree centigrade. And because of the aerosol, sulfuric acid aerosol, serving as a catalyst for the chlorine and nitrogen species to be freed from the compounds, then it became a catalyst for the ozone destruction with around 15 to 25 percent at high latitudes. It also would mean that ozone was depleted uh, in the tropics and possibly at temperate latitudes because of the global circulation. And uh, chlorine became elevated in the polar regions. So don't have a malaking catalytic effect. So that would be the summary. Uh, sir, according to most studies, Pinatubo's eruption caused a drop in the global temperature. How is this possible? How did this temperature drop after the global climate? So what, what happened? So in the stratosphere, the temperature increased yeah, because the sun is somewhat reflected there. No? And the, net, the, the opposite effect in the troposphere, it became cooler. So yeah, okay, so from 0.6 to close to 0.2, slightly 0.3, so around that. So that's the background. Sir, what could have caused the eruption? Ano po yung mga naging sanhi kung bakit pumutok ang pinatubo? Oh, the eruption itself. Well, uh, any volcanic eruption is uh, essentially triggered by the change in the pressure within the volcano. And so for the volcano to explode, there must be high pressure inside higher than the cup or the top of the volcano. And the reason why vo volcanic eruption of Pinatubo in 1991 was so explosive is because of the tremendous amount of sulfur dioxide gas exhaled within the magma. And uh, the amount of sulfur dioxide gas is correlated with the composition of the magma um, and also the interval between major explosions of the volcano. The composition of the magma in Pinatubo is uh, acidic. Uh, in terms of rock, it's like uh, granite, but we call it uh, dacite. Uh, essentially, that kind of lava compared to Hawaiian volcano, which would release the gas somewhat freely, uh, this dacitic lava is viscous. So it can trap the gases without releasing it, unlike the basaltic lava, which can easily uh, emit it. And so with that trapped uh, sulfur dioxide gas, and because of the large amount of, or the large volume of magma involved in the eruption, then the, and because of the long interval between explosions of Pinatubo, like explosive eruptions, prior to the 91 eruption of Pinatubo lasted for 1,000 years in between. And so then you can see that the uh, eruption can also emit uh, large amounts of sulfur dioxide. Now the volume of uh, solid parts that were exploded by the volcano can be 7 to 10 cubic kilometers. Now although the main trigger is the 
amount of gas which would create the, the increased pressure in the volcano. The other hypothesis why the volcano erupted earlier than expected, because the interval between the 1991 eruption and the previous one was around 500 years, Napaaga. So we thought that the 1990 earthquake in Luzon, magnitude 7.8, shook the volcano and facilitated the arrival of new magma into the shallow level magma chamber or storage that it essentially the new basaltic magma since it was very hot heated up the pre-existing magma in the chamber the earthquake shook it but essentially the last trigger was the arrival of the hot magma below once you heat it up because of the temperature the gas will explode and then it will explode okay so that's the main trigger Oh, so is it possible, sir, that there were human activities that could have triggered the eruption? The explosion itself? No, no human intervention can trigger that explosion. So, sir, can you name some of these gases that were injected in the atmosphere, some of these harmful gases or chemicals? Okay, as uh, I explained earlier, uh, typically the gases would be carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, chlorine, and even nitrogen. But, uh, again... Uh, it becomes harmful uh, in different ways. Carbon dioxide can be a greenhouse gas if the explosion is not so strong and the carbon dioxide stays just in the troposphere. And the sulfur dioxide can be sulfuric acid. Can, can, if there is rain of sulfuric acid with water, it can actually burn your skin and burn the vegetation. But in terms of climate, uh, it can form aerosols that will block the rays of the sun, heating the stro uh, stratosphere but cooling. I'm not sure if it's harmful, but it will be harmful in a sense that it will now serve as a catalyst for the chlorine and nitrogen species uh, to be freed, and that chlorine will now eat up, uh, will deplete the ozone because chlorine will react with the O3 or the ozone. So in essence. Uh, depleting the protective ozone layer from the harmful radiations of the sun. Sir, meron pong German Nobel Prize winner in the name of Paul Crutzen who proposed the injection of sulfur in the atmosphere to battle global warming. Sir, what is your opinion on this proposal? Well, that has been proposed long ago. <laughs> and of course, uh, to reduce the temperature temporarily, that might work. But as explained earlier, it can also lead to other uh, negative effects like depletion of the, the ozone. So people will either be affected by global warming if the temperature of the earth will be warm or skin cancer and, and other harmful effects if uh, the ozone protective layer will be depleted. So uh, that has to be studied carefully if ever that is uh, an option. Because uh, you may not be able to control what will happen up there and its effects at the lower level of the atmosphere, the troposphere. Ayan, maraming salamat, Dr. Solidum, FIVOX Director and our guest for today. Thank you po. Ito ang naging talakayan natin sa araw na ito. Bitin ba? Abangan ng buong istorya sa nalalapit naming blog post release. In behalf of our group members and contributors, Julie Marcaida, Gillian Tibole, Kemp Afable, Claudio Alar, John Harold Pancho, and Trina Kugtas, and of course, our professor, Dr. Mylene G. Cayetano, this has been Kyla Marcaida, your today's Pinoy Scientist.